welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. So I was hunting on reverb a day or two ago, and I happened to stumble upon this interesting listing. So naturally, I click it, and instantly I'm disgusted by this thing. <laughs> Okay, so this is an ES-295. Well, actually a little bit more on that later, but that's what it's being stylized after. The most famous user of this guitar is Scotty Moore. He was the guitarist for Elvis, and he really shaped his sound using this instrument. And I once had one from the 50s, and that's a guitar I will never forget. But I was excited to see Gibson actually did do a signature guitar for him in 2014. I'm gonna have to hunt one of those things down. But here's what a regular ES-295 looks like. You've got dual dog ear P90 pickups. You have the beautiful flower motif pick guard. You've got the sharp Florentine cutaway and this trapeze tailpiece down here with your three-way toggle selector up here. But the whole thing about these guitars is the gold finish. So naturally, when I see a metal flake gold finish, I just instantly hated this thing. And you're also going to notice that this has a different bridge and tailpiece setup. But at least everything else is kind of 295 specs. So then I flip over to the back. Yup, sure enough, they even did the gold sparkle flake finish on the back. At this point, I'm ready to click off and move on to something else. But then something caught my attention just as I was about to leave. It's advertised as a Gibson 1955 ES-175 conversion 295. Okay, now we're in a whole nother ballpark. It wasn't a 295 that was destroyed. It was a 175 that was upgraded. Just in case you're not familiar, in ES-175, it looks like this. You've got the humbucker pickups, you've got the trapeze tailpiece, and you have the floating bridge that you can move. I think of Steve Howe from Yes and Asia when I think about this guitar. But an ES-295 is basically just an all-gold version with a wraparound bridge, and everything else is pretty much the same. You even have the same inlays, same construction, materials. It really just comes down to your preference of bridge and tailpiece as well as pickups. But that can get a little bit hairy as well, depending on what year model you're talking about. So this guitar started life like this. So that started to answer some questions that I had about this thing as to why it had the trapeze tailpiece. It's either that or they were kind of going for the Scotty Moore vibe because he did his up like a trapeze tailpiece with a floating bridge. But it looks like instead of a floating bridge, they decided to do a set bridge. I don't know how I feel about that. It just kind of looks a little bit bare and naked. Would you look at that? They actually put posts in it. So they must have like put some sort of block inside there that enabled them to do that. Speaking of things that just don't look quite right on this one, the toggle switch location is off. So they've got it right here, but it should be like right here. Just as a quick comparison, so that lines up pretty much with the second to last fret. Whereas this one, it's just slightly above that. Maybe it's just the photo angle, it just does not look right. It might also just be that we're missing the rubber grommet. But if we look at the 295, it seems to line up in between. So maybe that's another small difference between these guys. The pickup selector location. I mean, don't take my word for any of this stuff. This is just like generalizations that I've seen because I actually haven't owned a 175 before, only the 295. And even then, that was kind of a butchered example and I wasn't really taking in all the information that I do today. So despite its faults, it's still kind of cool. I bet that metallic finish would look better in person, but then it hits ya. Oh no. <laughs> Somebody converted it to a 12 string. Oh my goodness. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> At least it's just a conversion job. Man, that just looks so goofy. So if I were to guess of how they did this, because I doubt the original headstock was quite that tall, they probably just sawed it off and then grafted another piece of wood, tried to sculpt the open book headstock shape. If I was going to go through the trouble of doing all that, I would probably try to move the inlays up. That way it looks a little bit more symmetrical, because that just looks goofy being all the way down here. But they did it a slotted headstock style just to get away with using the original headstock with the extension. Then apparently they reinforced the body to take the extra tension of the additional six strings. So it's just kind of a weird butchered 175 that they did a bunch of modifications to to make it a sparkly 12 string ES-295. I'm not the biggest fan of this one, but you know, what's done has been done, so you might as well just enjoy it for what it is. But to further solidify why this thing needed a separate episode all on its own, is the owners of it actually made a video playing it. 
And that's also where I've been taking some of these B-roll shots from as well. on Reverb for $4,559.41 and is being sold by the Fellowship of Acoustics in the Netherlands. All in all, how is their price? Let's find out because I'm not quite too sure. So comparing here, it looks like this one's listed for $5,000. It is also a refinished job, but it was done in like a more traditional sunburst. This one also has the P90 pickups. So I mean, it appears that, you know, if you need a 12 string guitar and you want something fancy, it doesn't seem to be heavily overpriced by any means. Now that I've seen the sparkle finish in a video, I definitely dig it a lot more than I did in the photos. Apparently it was done by Marty Bell and checking out their website, it looks like that's a $700 process to refinish a guitar like that, which is honestly a lot cheaper than I thought it would have been. Oh, but they no longer offer nitro finishes. So that's not so good for the purist out there. And it looks like there's additional cost for the sparkle finish as well. So the refin job might have been as much as a thousand bucks. But hey, let's check out the rest of his website here because I'm impressed with what I'm seeing here. It looks like that might potentially be the man himself, Marty Bell, working on something. But here's some of his more traditional work. So it looks like we've got a couple of Telecasters here, some Stratocaster style guitars. Ooh, even a TV Yellow. That's nice. So I guess if you're not scared of having a poly finish or whatever finish that he's using on here, which wouldn't be a big deal for a Fender styled instrument, but I would be leery of refinishing a Gibson with that because that could hurt resale value. But then again, if you're refinishing a guitar, that's going to hurt its value anyways, unless you're just building it from the start. Ooh, it looks like you even did an Antigua. But it seems like graphics might be something that people go to him for. Like if you want the Union Jack flag or like some of these zebra stripes. Oh, there's a Tom DeLonge fan right there. <laughs> I really like this one. It kind of reminds me of the Beatles for some reason. Yep, that's a common design right there. Ooh, some Eddie Van Halen ones. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, I can't forget the leopard print guitars. Now moving into the sparkles. I'm guessing this is probably what this guy might be known for. I had never heard of him before today, but I'm sure he has some sort of a following. Somebody did a double Telecaster semi-hollow. That's a nice little flower motif right there. Looks like we got a Minaric guitar there, and somebody even did one of those Gibson basses. I feel like I've seen this one for sale on Reverb before. Man, he even does sparkle graphics, so if you want to mix all that together. Kind of got the Zach Wilde thing going on there. Some Metallica vibes on that one. Whoa! dragon guitar <laughs> oh that's an interesting guitar body and then the face can't say it's my favorite design on the face but you know it's kind of an interesting guitar design in general that's a pretty nice look to it a prs and super silver sparkle flake i could see like katie perry or somebody using that 
Okay, he's done some work for Motley Crue. And hey, looky here. It shows you every single color that he can do, ranging from blues to reds to like some browns, the hot pinks, the greens. I mean, if you're restoring a guitar and it needs a complete finish, his rates really aren't that bad. Where is he located? I can't seem to find that information, but his turnaround time, that is insane. Five to seven days? This guy's just got everything, specially trained carrier pigeons to get your guitar. The only question left, would you rock the vintage 1955 ES 175 converted to 295 specs and then converted to a 12 string or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.